so I was thinking whether I should drive and listen to some nice music to keep me calm through a traffic jam or should I make a video and I decided making a video my thoughts on semi-finals and where things are going from here um, I had some time to process, read, listen, re-watch so I think it seemed appropriate I also I'm a lot happier today um, I went to the mall where they had 50% off all shirts of teams that are eliminated Croatia shirts here are totally sold out and I don't like them either uh, anyway my France shirt I got prize with the World Cup which I'm very happy that I got a finalist shirt and probably one that will be worn in the final um, for I think I think it was 55 that I paid something like in the, uh, something like that uh, so instead of 85 euros I paid 55 euros uh, still mind-boggling to me that you could get a shirt prior to the tournament for that price um, yeah but it was kind of a no-brainer for me I wanted uh, the France shirt was one uh, when I saw it I know I was not too excited about the World Cup shirts this year but when I saw the France shirt it had something that I liked with the dark blue and then the light blue shoulders with the zigzag pattern seemed to be unique enough uh, that yeah I want to have that one of course I want the Nigeria one as well but uh, that seemed to be the one that really stood out to me and I know uh, the only perfect score I gave was to the Mexico away shirt and I was a close second was the Brazilian away shirt but the Brazilian away shirt I never really saw I mean I saw it for uh, that price but then at that time I liked the France shirt better which might which might uh, be a reason for reevaluating but the simple reason is that I want to have a Nike France home shirt more than a Brazil away shirt and I really want to have a Brazil away shirt in blue uh, and this year's looked nice but I I'm sure I'll get it for cheap sometime soonish as well so uh, I was not in a hurry and the France seemed to be kind of better and I have enough I have two Brazil shirts as you already know so yeah I'm still very happy about that I honestly if I wanted to have a Nike France it should have been a 2014 version but at the moment this is you cannot get it for any reasonable price I saw I think a year or two ago I saw a really interesting one classic football shirts that was a um, somewhat player version uh, but it would have been a little bit too expensive and that's why I held back from buying it and yeah I like the, that one honestly better than the current one but the current one has some has a really nice touch and I really like the French flag on the back uh, the back tape that's a really really ni nice touch so I'm very happy with that jersey uh, overall and I'm mostly happy that I bought it prior to the World Cup and it might be the World Cup winning jersey uh, which would be even beating the three shirts I bought in 2014 which were all semi-finalists but none of the winner and none of those were worn in the final so yeah you can figure out which ones I got uh, yeah and I got three other jerseys that I might show you in a separate video uh, later today it was half price and for that reason alone I really wanted to get it oh, what's happening here someone stalled the engine fortunately I'm making a video so I'm not gonna go with red uh, red head and everything I'm actually quite calm at the moment yep got three jerseys I'll show it to you in another video after I give you my thoughts so I'm on a total of four jerseys for this World Cup and then I bought this one for Croatia as I said I don't like the current Croatia jerseys even if they win it I don't think they should become any style icon I gotta be honest I really hope they will not do the dark jersey well having said all that uh, let's go to the semi-finals and a little look ahead what's gonna wait what's gonna be waiting for us in the final um, I think both semi-finals were actually quite interesting games uh, 
the first one had a lot more skill but it was not as riveting as the second one I think France Belgium you could see those were all the good players from a long time uh, from this tournament I think that those were technically the best teams yes we could put Brazil in there as well and then that's pretty much it I don't want to put Spain in there because Spain uh, had maybe technically very gifted players but that was that uh, they never gelled as a team I would like to live in a parallel universe where Lopetegui doesn't get fired the Spanish Spanish team doesn't implode and there is a second plan I also start to like what they have been doing since that disaster I think it was clear that Iero was not gonna continue uh, part of me wanted it but then uh, when I saw how they had no plan and how shaky they were yeah I'm sorry Iero I really think that he was a great leader and that he might be a great leader similar to Deschamps but yeah he needs a little bit more uh, experience and maybe that will not be even a stumbling block having managed this Spain side on last second I hope I hope someone will take a chance on him and maybe he will get a chance to uh, play with Spain, Spain, Spain again uh, I actually start to really agree that against Portugal they were still using the Lopetegui game plan and it worked perfectly and then he had to kind of adjust to the other two where surely they have had already something in store and planned something but there were not many ideas it looked all right but you always had the feeling that there could be more but why am I talk talking about Spain I should be talking about France Belgium England and Croatia um, France against Belgium as I said the two most experienced well maybe not like but the two most skilled sides in the tournament uh, with one being very offensively minded and doing something for the game the other one holding back holding back and having a solid defense and getting through and again not having a striker in form and whenever France doesn't have a strike in form they're gonna win the tournament uh, and I think everyone will agree that barring a colossal collapse France will win this tournament I, they, there's just so much in their favor I think they're the most complete squad of this tournament you don't need to have the best players and they have very good players but they are for sure the most complete squad at this entire tournament they uh, play together as a team they fight for each other it is not pretty to watch I will always admit that but it is successful and uh, we were joking today I mean it's already a little bit look ahead in the final um, with my colleague that I said uh, for Croatia he, he's the Croatian colleague for Croatia just being in this final is already such an achievement that you actually really can enjoy and there's next to no pressure you can really lay low if you want it uh, and no matter the result you're gonna be a hero you're gonna have a hero's welcome so that is something and unless you really 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 get hammered in the final and I'm thinking uh, what Spain did to Italy in 2012 uh, with the 4 nothing, I you're not gonna be disgraced and that's when my colleague said yeah and France wins uh, makes a goal and then shuts it down <laughs> I cannot say he's wrong uh, it could could get one-sided but it could also go you know one nothing and that was that I really would like to see a good game in the final but I don't see it going ahead more on that on the final let's go back to the Seba fans yeah as I said uh, what really disappointed me in the France game is that how France did not uh, how Belgium did not respond well uh, how they uh, probably they, they wanted to respond but that uh, French basically shut them down and then the one player that could head uh, in a goal or uh, two that is taking off in Fellaini uh, I'm not sure whether it was uh, because of technical reasons or because of an injury 
I really hope it was for technical reasons. Uh, and yeah, Azar was uh, sensational in the game, but uh, he just got exhausted towards the first half, to, uh, towards the, uh, in the second half somewhere. And Lukaku, as great as he was against uh, Brazil, was a no sh was almost a no show against France. France marked him tightly, and De Bruyne was also a no show. Uh, I still don't get how De Bruyne was voted man of the match against Brazil. Yes, he scored the winning goal, but uh, that team, that uh, that win was all Azar and Lukaku. Uh, Lukaku was amazing against Brazil and maybe this was just you know after effects that he couldn't do it any anymore I really don't want to blame any a anyone for having a horrible performance or something like that because you don't know how they feel on the day it's not always that you have the best you're in the best condition similar to Kane yesterday I just note that from a world-class striker I would expect at least one goal in the latter stages. Uh, if Kane continues this way, he joins the ranks of Miroslav Klose for me uh, in uh, performing well against Minos and then when it counts, uh, he doesn't get goals. I mean, Klose got his goals late in the career, but in his first showing, he scored three against Saudi Arabia and I think he didn't score a single one in the knockout stage. So it was similar. He scored his five goals and that was that in the group stage. Yeah, one against Ireland and one against Cameroon, and then that was that. No more goals from Klose, and I looks very similar with Kane here. Um, yeah, so sure tactics play a role, but I was, again, I thought Belgium should have more up their sleeves to uh, get something like a goal going against France. Once France took control of the game, um, right around the 30th minute, mi minute or so, uh, they didn't let go of it any anymore. And they have so much skill on their squad that they really can kill off a game. Uh, Belgium barely had any chances any anymore. And uh, France also, I said they don't have a strike. I'm thinking of Giroud because I think Mbappé comes a little bit more uh, over the wings. Uh, but that's the biggest weapon is Mbappé and maybe if um, Griezmann pulls something, yeah, then they have enough offense. There was also this scene that I honestly, I was not too, too aware, but now I was uh, watching it again where my 2D seemingly had a concussion on the field. Yeah, uh, concussion in soccer, I think ev everyone will remembers uh, Krama in the World Cup final where he just uh, he doesn't remember that anymore uh, that is also an amazing fact to me that this guy played I think his second international game and the first one that really really counted in the World Cup final that's unbelievable that's that's that that's pretty cool uh, fortunately he had to come off so that's not so cool but yeah this, 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 this I think is an amazing fact yeah, so there was nothing coming from Belgium and that was a pity. I mean, maybe it would have been not too bad if Belgium would have, would have gotten the lead, honestly. I know I was in the France camp, uh, as I said before. For me, France is, was for a long time my third favorite team. And when I say third favorite team, yes, there's always Austria, my home country. And then there any, any team where I have direct family relations, which at the moment uh, extends almost to four teams. Um, Austria, Bulgaria, Peru, and um, uh, the United States. But I mean outside of this group where I really have family attachment to them. Um, so, and France for a long time occupied the number three spot that is now taken in a way by Argentina. Uh, I'm trying, I'm actually not as, it's not like the steep hill anymore, I'm a little bit more even, I actually enjoy if someone plays well like this year England or Belgium, I actually am happy for them. There were times and similar for Germany, I think I came, came, came around if Germany plays well then they should go far and I don't mind them going far. They don't necessarily need to win it because you know that's a rivalry between Austria and Germany. 
and since also the Netherlands is on the list of my teams that I really like um, yeah Germany is just losing out but I can tell you I did not buy Germany Jersey but I was close of buying one today so that's how even keeled I got but yeah I expected more from a Belgium and it would have been good if Belgium could have gotten ahead and then France could have maybe shown a little bit and opened it up a, bit, a little bit more uh, but yeah the game was interesting to watch but it was not exciting uh, there were chances but it was not exciting overall and that was maybe the thing that kind of bugged me but I've seen much more boring semi-finals at the World Cup uh, that I also to be fair I have to say so it, it fitted in well with this year's World Cup which I think overall was a very good World Cup uh, there were so many exciting good games uh, when I just think about the World Cups in 2006 and 2010 they were horrible games I mean there was hardly anything of note to talk about uh, this World Cup there were quite a few really 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 good games it was already in 2014 but in 2014 there were a lot of lopsided wins that kind of uh, were provided the excitement but here it was really the uh, take out group G there were not really many lopsided wins yes there was a rush, a rush against Saudi Arabia but uh, not when two top teams met now the second semi-final I said it already in my first review was the one where uh, similar it, it wasn't in the end a similar storyline but it was not as it's, you could see that the players there are not as gifted as the ones from Belgium and France but it was much more open and I'm still wondering how did Croatia get those uh, energies they played a whole 90 minutes longer than France just think about that Modric when he came off Ah, he looked like he cannot he cannot walk anymore Mandzukic was limping on one leg had two big had one big chance and one goal uh, that is the amazing thing but uh, I, I think the first thing that I thought and I didn't mention this video that maybe this World Cup semi-final although it looked for a long time that England will win it I think this will be a good learning experience for this young English squad um, they can go home with their heads held high and I know that uh, once you make it to the semi-final it's surely not guaranteed that you make it again especially if you're England uh, I think every quarter-final in England should be celebrated to be honest um, I do think that the England team this England team and what's coming there is a lot of hope that it will actually improve and that they will eventually win probably a title although I'm thinking more the Euros or even the Nations League than necessarily the World Cup but there is something good happening with in England and I think maybe this could be a learning experience for this young squad um, to yeah you could not kill off a game and you need to learn that might also be a learning experience for Southgate because um, yeah I, I didn't thought think it uh, when I was watching the game but yeah they didn't have a second gear uh, they are flexible in their tactics at the head of the game but then uh, they couldn't make any switches there he got rid of a lot of the tradition they, it was not 4-4-2 and we only think 4-4-2 uh, he played three at the back broke the tradition he prepared well and I give Southgate a lot of lot, lot of credit but it might might be that he did not do his best changes I also thought that I would not necessarily have taken Sterling off even if he doesn't score many uh, he's still a faster player and I think the only reason that Kane didn't come off is because you need him in the penalty shootout which uh, was a real possibility so yeah uh, maybe there was it was a little bit greenhornish uh, the way that England played uh, this youthful exuberance that you saw in the first half uh, kind of once the more experienced Croatian squad was go was coming and was taking control of the game you could kind of see yeah this is gonna be tough how are we gonna limit this and they didn't find the way and 
this was a Croatian squad that was not like Colombia playing without their best player. This was a Croatian squad that had their best players, although they were limping around the field. It was still the best players out there, uh, players with a lot of experience, a lot of routine. Uh, and that counts for a lot in, in those tight, tight games. Those are players that have play regularly in the Champions League. I am honestly, while I'm happy for Croatia, and of, of course I'm wearing a Croatia jersey today, I am happy because I think it's something amazing that they achieved. I'm a little bit sad that England uh, did not make it to the final. Uh, part of it is because they were refreshing at this tournament, but also uh, there is this quote from Tony Adams, and honestly, Arsenal is one of my uh, more liked teams in, uh, in the Premier League. But when the old Arsenal guys say that this team cannot be successful because of all the Spurs guys, give me a break. This was so unnecessary to make such a stupid statement. Just for that, I wanted that the England squad does well. That don't break, uh, break the old stereotypes. Uh, yes, Spurs hasn't won anything, but they have been better than Arsenal over the last few years. And yeah, I think uh, what happened to England against Croatia is a little bit like what happened to Spurs against Juventus. They just got, they just faced an opponent that is a lot more experienced and uh, cold-blooded in many, many, many ways. Uh, and then you lose. And, and now you gotta take stock and you can say what can I make better, what could be better. And probably, um, I think Southgate should definitely stay on and probably stay on for a long time. But maybe if he takes, similar to Klinsmann, takes a Yogi Löw, takes someone who has some, in addition to his managerial skills, man management, uh, pre pre preparation that he brings, maybe um, get someone who also knows a little bit about tactics. Uh, I think he would be open to that. I really, that's, that's, and I keep saying, I always say they are prepared, as a, but this breaking uh, with tradition, this kind of new mindset that he went out to the NFL and the NBA, uh, yeah, it's, uh, that's for me unheard of. We don't need to do it the British way. We can look at other players. And that's why I bemoan a little bit that England didn't go further, but of course, um, Yesterday I was really neutral at this game. I really was. I was. I cheered for every goal, all three of those goals, because I was. I, I would have loved to see both matchups. Yes, the France England is a little bit more enticing, but I think uh, Croatia. Croatia France is also very intriguing, and Croatia uh, really deserves it. And it is this one final that is not of the big nations, and that Croatia now has two semi-final appearances this people forget because they have so they had such great teams already this is four million people living there they are not even at the center of where uh what i call the center cluster of uh, soccer which is uh northwestern europe no they are not there and they achieve so much this is something that needs to be so uh, valued and cherished, you cannot believe, honestly. Uh, this is a higher achievement than uh, what Germany did, for instance, four years ago. Uh, or Spain even. Spain had to break curses, but uh, Spain has a long soccer, uh, soccer tradition and a lot of um, money behind it. Uh, it was all about, do we get uh, Real Madrid and Barcelona players to coexist? Uh, make a good team out of, out, out of that and that's maybe a similar task that um, Gareth Southgate faced because uh, all those Premier League players uh, yeah they play for the clubs earn a lot of money and therefore uh, the England team is maybe not the nearest and dearest to the heart um, and that reminds me now also since we were talking Spain again and England about the so-called Guardiola effect. Um, when I read it, I just had to smile. This is uh, just made up. Uh, it should have been a Cantona episode. Guardiola was the manager of Barcelona and when they won the World Cup there. 
Then he was manager of Bayern Munich when Germany won the World Cup. Of course, now he's the manager at Manchester City, so England can win the World Cup. I think there's more to the stuff that I said with um, the, champ the country of the Champions League winner not winning the World Cup or the Euros. Because uh, there is a more direct co 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 correlation. Yes, Guardiola was revolutionizing uh, Germany, uh, Germany soccer a little bit, how Bayern Munich uh, approached the game. Uh, but I think his biggest revolution was what he introduced at Barcelona, because this had also a direct impact on the national team. The Germany team, um, yes, benefited a little bit from him, but uh, you always have to remember that already Jupp Heynckes did uh, great work and he won the treble. They played maybe more sophisticated, Bayern played more sophisticated soccer when uh, Guardiola was there, um, but I think the seeds were sown already sooner. And the way that Germany played, this was devised by Jürgen Klinsmann and Jogi Löw and, you know, Ralf Rangnick and Jürgen Klopp, all those great minds uh, of German soccer. This is where this is coming from. So when I read that, this was stupid. So yeah, uh, from Belgium also, I have to say, and you know, it's kind of a goodbye. I want to make a separate ep episode lo looking ahead of the final. For Belgium, I was very happy that they made it to the semi-final. For, for me, if you make it as a golden generation to a semi-final, to me personally, you don't need to win it. Semi-final or final should be sufficient to really um, be crowned as a great nation. The Dutch, for instance, never won. I mean, the Dutch were really, the Dutch of the 7th century is a team by itself. They never won the World Cup, but they revolutionized soccer and uh, remembered for the nice play. I think Belgium will be remembered for their positive performances and at least two really great knockout games. So um, that's a big positive. That they then didn't manage against France to really put the French on the heels. Uh, yes, I count as a disappointment, but I don't think that Belgium in itself had a disappointing World Cup. I even thought that the last World Cup was not a disappointment. This was the first time that they really were there. Disappointment was the Euros. There they should have made at least, at least the semi-finals. Um, England is a, of course a bigger surprise. And then yeah, we have the two finalists that I'll talk about later. But let's uh, also speak a little bit about England versus Belgium. Uh, it's a rematch of the group game and it might be actually a real rematch in the sense that both teams might feature second string squads. I hope they don't. I really hope they don't, but it can well happen. Because uh, this has been kind of the tradition in this third place playoffs that you don't play your strongest squad. <sighs> History repeats itself. Today, uh, a colleague of mine said he really wanted to see England versus Belgium play in the final. I said, well, you get it, but not in the final. Uh, he basically looked at me, can you please leave? <laughs> No, uh, I'm really, really enjoying the fact that we have a non-traditional final in the World Cup. Uh, and this is really, really the first, I think since 62, the f when... So I got sabotaged by my camera, <laughs> oddly enough. So I'm doing this, uh, having arrived. Uh, what I want to say is the first real final since 1962. Slovakia, that we have a non-traditional power in the sense that it's not one that has won the World Cup or was at least very close. Yes, we had Spain against um, the Netherlands in 2010, but they were number one and number three in the odds prior to the tournament. So this is a lot more unexpected. For that reason, this is really a great final. Uh, and I love it. I absolutely love it. And last thing, uh, we had such finals in the Euros before. I think just two years back when we had France against Portugal. We also had Denmark against Germany or Greece against Portugal. Very non-traditional finals. Germany against Czechoslovakia. Uh, but compare it with two years ago. There was also a very lopsided bracket with the uh, upper half very heavy with favorites and the lower half kind of blah. blah and similar this year. And in both cases, France made it through the tougher bracket to the final. Will they lose it this year? 
remains to be seen. Uh, I'm sure that Deschamps will make sure that history doesn't repeat itself. Uh, there are a few factors that speak against it, but it's an interesting observation. And with that, let's finish this video. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. My thoughts are a little bit more random, but you know, I try to stay on track with all my thoughts that I have on the World Cup semifinals, jerseys and so on. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Well, I wanted to make an addendum to this video. I didn't want to make a new video with just my new shirts because I probably will make anyway a review and edit to the blog of the shirts that I have. This is a project that I want to do. But I'm still so happy and I mentioned it in this big video on the semifinals um, about the shirts that I got. So let's get right to it. The first one is kind of a little bit of a vindication. I was ordering an England shirt for 55 euros online. I uh, picked it up yesterday and it was a Youth XL. Of course it doesn't fit. Now I knew that I can send it back and get uh, and get probably the right one, but I also knew that in the case, and that's not necessarily what I wanted to happen, but I knew that in case that England gets eliminated, I know the sports store that's close to my work, it's an inter sports store that will sell it often for 50% off. And it's exactly what I got. Sent the jersey back, saved another 10 bucks. Here is my first England shirt. I'm actually quite happy to get this one. I, first the uh, star is a little bit invisible. Uh, I also like here the St. George's cross on the back which matches somewhat nicely with the line. Uh, we can talk more about this shirt. It still has this zigzaggy pattern but you don't really see it. So yeah, really really nice. Very happy to have that one. So my first England jersey. Now I can if I make videos I have more about England, I can wear an England jersey. The next one was also long on my list. I really want to have Uruguay. That's what I got. I, again, 50% off. Uruguay was eliminated quarterfinals. I really love the sun pattern here on the front of the shirt. I could do without all the dots on it, but a really nice shirt. I'm very happy I got this one. Uh, yes, I'm an Argentina fan. But I think a Uruguay jersey is almost a must for any collection. I really like it. I also like this little, I mean it's not really the flag, but since we have the sun on the front, it makes sense to have this on the back. Really, really nice jersey uh, overall. And the last one I was going back and forth. Shall I get Spain? I wanted to get a new Spain version, maybe one with a star, but I wasn't especially fond of this year's uh, one. I liked the one two years ago a little bit better. The ideal one would be, of course, 2012. Uh, but yeah, uh, should I go Germany? Uh, I was going back and forth on that for a little bit. Should I get the Germany jersey? Uh, I cannot wear a Germany jersey. They're the big rivals. But then I thought, yeah, but this is the jersey that they were humiliated in. So maybe you can wear this one and don't feel too bad about it. But yeah, in the end I decided no, it just doesn't feel right. And I, they only had the white one. I mean, if it was the green one, I might have a Germany jersey by now. I just couldn't. It just it doesn't, I don't like this current version. If it had the German flag over, uh, probably would be a different story. No. Uh, also, they uh, Sweden. I have a Sweden jersey, and I'm not so fond of that Sweden jersey. Uh, and neither one of the Argentinas are right. Portugal, I have the 2012 or 2016. They're all looking very similar. So there's only one left. Uh, Russia, I was also considering, but I thought the design for the Russia shirt was. Uh, it looked great with the color, but there's the Russian flag in there, but you don't see that other that it's kind of a little bit lame. So I got with the best looking Adidas jersey outside of Mexico. They didn't have Mexico, of course. Uh, Belgium. And I'm happy that I have it. Uh, I said the other day that uh, it's a little bit wrong being a Dutch fan to wear the Belgium jersey, but I think it's a nice memory. And it's a really nice Belgium shirt. This is 
I could get on board if Belgium was wearing this on a regular basis. Um, it is also my first Adidas shirt with the stripes on the sides and I also like that they are on the side but you don't really see them because they are a little bit darker red. For that reason I love this shirt also. And yeah, this was kind of the last selling point for me. And they are semi-finalists. So yeah, I have the shirts for the third place playoff. I have my France shirt for the final. I'm sorry, I want to get a red, white, jacket, Croatia jersey, but not this year's. I just, yeah, I don't like it. Last, the last one, 2016, that would be top of my list. Maybe we'll get it if I find it somewhere. <laughs> I saw quite a lot of few people wearing this one and it looks marvelous. Uh, but yeah, those are my new acquisitions. I'll probably make some separate videos to supplement my blog. You know I have already my France video up there for that shirt that I add to the blog and yeah. I just needed to share my happiness about that. Uh, and yeah, we might get after the World Cup a little bit deeper into my shirt collection. I hope you enjoyed all of this. I know it was a little bit all over the place, uh, but yeah, that's sometimes how I am and I'm not gonna apologize for that. Hope you enjoyed this. Give me a thumbs up if you liked that one. Um, subscribe and I will talk to you soon. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. If you've already done so, I would like to thank you for your support. It is very much appreciated. Also, check out the accompanying blog at the link provided in the description below and at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and until next time.